The concept of capturing images and freezing them forever has always fascinated humanity. The desire for recording and depicting nature has been translated into various forms of self-expression, such as paintings and sculptures. With the passage of time and evolution of civilization, painting evolved as a major art form, increasingly practiced to record events, happenings, people, legends and nature. But the human quest for fixing the reflections of the mirror and making pictures without any painting aids led to the formation of the concept of photography. The crystallization of this idea and giving a shape to this human dream can be traced back to Aristotle. He initiated this concept by applying the theory of optical principle to develop the camera obscura. Principally, I was merely a dark room with a small hole in the wall through which an inverted image of the view outside was projected onto the opposite wall. These images were then traced out by an artist. This effect of mine was known widespread as early as the 11th century. The following centuries saw me evolve as a major source of study material increasingly used for observing solar eclipses. But it was from the 16th century onwards that my design was constantly updated a variety of people from various cross cultures made significant improvements in my design to see me evolve as a better instrument to help record and capture events. The major improvisations in my design were carried out in the 17th century. I became fairly common knowledge by the 18th century. By then, I was constructed in innumerable types and sizes such as tent type camera obscura, table camera obscura, sedan chair camera obscura, book camera obscura, and box camera obscura. But the important landmark in the course of my evolution came in the year 1793. Joseph Nisfor and Claude Nips tried to fix my images by chemical means though they succeeded in doing so only in 1816. That was the first time ever a photo negative was taken. It took them another 10 years to develop a positive copy of it. A picture had been created with a pencil of light and the photographer need not have been an artist. The camera had captured a fleeting movement and in doing so had added a new dimension to life. In 1829, Nips entered into partnership with Louis-Jacques Mante d'Agour to commercialize this technique. By May 1837, two years after the demise of Nips, d'Agour invented the famous daguerreotype technique of photoprinting, which was revealed to the world on the 19th of August, 1839, at Paris. My official date of birth. My birth was thus a scientific process which took centuries to evolve with commitment from various scholars, astronomers, scientists and noblemen who labored with their cumbersome apparatus and their formidable perseverance to enrich the world. My ability to replicate and reveal hidden truths was received with great enthusiasm throughout the world. My capacity to record nature automatically resulted in my immense popularity. Photography reached the Indian shores only seven months after it was officially unveiled to the world. This is the story of what happened after the camera came to India. A glimpse into the vast world of personal experience of a number of people. As an artist, my first uh, concern is this that when a new medium or a new 
thing is invented, how the tradition or whatever is current in the time accepts it, assimilates it and brings out a new form of art. At one stage when the when our traditional painting was at a stage when there was hardly I mean I, I may say that it was a stage when it had come to a kind of a dead stop. There was hardly any further way out because so many new inventions were being made. At that time when photography came uh, was invented and it came to India, almost it was very simult it came to India very simultaneously uh, when it was invented in, in introduced in Europe. So the artists failed to sort of find their way, you know, or their relevance, how, how they would continue mm -hmm. their work because photography was get, getting prominence accepted. And they tried to rather than uh, accept the defeat, they try to find something new uh, out of the photographic medium uh, like perspective, light and shade and those are the things that they adapted so that the, their market also would prefer to buy their paintings which had this photographic quality as well as the quality of the painting that they were used to see since generations. No? Mm -hmm. I will, I will, uh, these are sort of my initial purchases. No? When I was doing this Nathadwara uh, study, research, I mean I was surprised to see a photograph mm -hmm. of a Goswami mm -hmm. and also a, a painting of the same Goswami. But the way the, the, the artist has adapted this photograph, mm -hmm. I mean it makes it into a painting. Mm -hmm. Even this is a very interesting example because common man uh, was not not too much used to this black and white medium. No? I mean, he wanted color. Mm -hmm. uh, so a painter has adapted, uh, uh, taken this image, and make it made it into kind of a, an icon, sort right. of, no? right. uh, by adding flower vases and curtains and. Mm -hmm. Even uh, here, this image is traditional. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, while this perspective is added because of an artist's awareness to this uh, perspective. During the initial stages of photography in India, this medium was extensively used by the British during their journeys and expeditions across a vast expanse of our subcontinent. The early or initial photographic activities were confined mainly to Calcutta, which was then the capital of the country. A lot of commercial photographers and studios flourished in Calcutta during the 1840s and 1850s. The most renowned of them were the Bourne and Shefford, Johnston and Hoffman, and Burke and Schach. By the 1860s, Photography spread to several other cities and cantonment towns across India. The impact of this new medium was so great that over 150 well-known photographers, Indian as well as Britishers, flourished during the 1860s. More than 70 studios mushroomed all over the country, like those of Ahmad Ali Khan in Lucknow, G.K. Vate in Bangalore, Priyalal and Ratanlal in Agra, Uday Ramji in Jaipur, and Deen Dayal Studios in Indore and Hyderabad. Photographic societies were also formed at Bombay, Madras, and Calcutta. With the growing popularity of this new and fashionable art form, Indian artistic expression, painting, came to be supplemented by it. There was a custom, or rather I would say a practice, that the Britishers used to uh, commission certain subjects to the Indian painters. And such paintings are these days known as company period paintings. Mm -hmm. So, for example, 
the Britishers commissioned this Indian artist to do the paintings of dancers, singers, and then various tribes, castes, various businesses, mm -hmm. trades, and archaeological monuments like you see I mean, this Taj Mahal or so it was like continuing the same tradition whatever was done during this uh, when the camera was not invented was continued rather the powerful role of the camera as an authentic recorder of events came to the fore in India when the first Indian independence struggle the so-called Sepoy Mutiny broke out in 1857. The then famous photo documenter James Robertson photographed with clinical precision its ruins and the devastations. <laughs> 